just pulled up to our parking spot and hiking in this road. We're gonna hike up to like four miles. There's already deer tracks cutting across the roads. Fourteen degrees with the wind chill is not fun. We made our way up half a mile in. Dude, my face is cold, I can hardly talk. We made it half a mile in and we jumped a doe and fawn right below us and they ran down towards this flat towards the creek. No bucks, so we're just gonna keep on heading up this way. There's a lot of clear cut in here, so I think it's only a matter of time before we glass something up. Hopefully, you never know with hunting, but we've seen deer today, so we can say we've seen something. Just nothing legal. There's certainly a lot of somewhat fresh deer tracks in the snow. And with how much tracks there is in the snow, you would think that we'd see more deer than what we have been seeing. We're gonna hike our way behind that ridge. And once we get back over there, it should open up into a bunch of clear cuts. keep forgetting my forks and my spoons. I distinctly remember yesterday putting a fork in my pack and I get out here this morning and I can't find my fork. So, lo and behold, my amazing natural spoon. Just bring the jet boil out. It's cold and it only weighs like an extra pound or something like that and you get to eat hot warm food instead of cold frozen bagels and granola bars and stuff like that.
hiked up out of that valley bottom. And we're just trying to get up as high as we can so that we have better visual onto all these ridges. And we got up to this knob right here and this spot is perfect. We can see and glass like 360 degrees and they all just look money. So we're just gonna post up here for the remainder of the day and we'll just see if we could catch some deer moving through. Hopefully a buck and put the smack down on them. But this visual from this vantage point is just like as good as it gets. A lot of clear cut and a lot of deer signs so we know there's deer traffic in here. We just gotta catch them when they're moving. That doe is huge. That's like one of the biggest body doe I've ever seen. I would have thought that was a bug just based off the body size. Maybe it just shed its antlers. <laughs> During the Possibly. It's a massive doe. That's a big doe. I thought it was an elk at first. <laughs> I wonder if she has a boyfriend. What's well, funny, see that tree that it's next to? Uh huh. I thought that was like a full size pine tree. Yeah. And so I saw the doe, I'm like, that animal's like 20 foot tall. <laughs> wow, her body is incredible. Like, that's impressive. I think it's like late morning. Yeah, 10.30 in the morning. Nate glassed across on one of these ridges, spotted a deer, and it's a big doe. Like a really big doe. Huge bodied. A massive doe. Yeah, massive doe. And it's 10.30 and she's just feeding in the wide open, so just goes to show you man when you're hunting like the late season you can never count anything out they could be moving midday first light last night nocturnal but as of right now she's moving when the sun is high and so there ain't no time for naps it's time to be spotting big deer that's impressive You see her pawing the snow to eat. She was pawing the snow to eat, that's cool. Glassing while I'm here eating my granola bar and frozen bagel with peanut butter. You know you're supposed to thaw your food before you bring them out here. I took the peanut butter out of the freezer last night. <laughs> it's chasing the dog, right? Yeah. It's like a it's like a little four by four. Little four by four? Yeah. the same stuff over and over and over again. I look down across on the second farthest finger ridge from us. I just spotted a buck. 
He's not very big. He's like a three by four. But he's like partially harassing this doe. And this doe's like running circles around him and he's just chilling. They have no idea we're here. He's out of range. He's like 600 yards. But the thing about this spot, there's a bunch of little finger ridges where you can like sneak onto the finger ridge across from him and shoot him across. You're looking at 300 yards max if you're doing that. And so we're just kind of keeping tabs on this buck and he's just feeding. I don't know where this doe went. Do you see the buck? I see the buck. Where, you see that like elbow log? Uh-huh. Where is he at compared to that? Like right above it. He's behind the little pine, like a little tree right now. He's going to the right right now. Yep. Walking out. Yeah, he's like, he's like a three by four. Man, 11 o'clock in the morning. Where's the buck? To the left of where you saw him or to the right? Dude, that doe is running. Yeah, that's, that's two does. I don't know where the buck is. Last time I saw him, he was... You see him where there's like the uh, yellow trees? Yeah. Above the elbow tree? Mm-hmm. I think he's behind there. It looks like there's a little berm right there. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. And see, so there's that little divot that he might have just went behind. Yeah, but there's three deer, there's two does. Yeah, she's bedded. she's bedded. So if she's bedded, I'm assuming the buck's also bedded. We go down this way and we just wait it out there. They're like where, right here in this patch? Uh huh. That? You see that patch right here? 633. Yeah, that's okay. exactly where that patch is. So that would be super close. Yeah, you're looking like a 200 yard shot. You're, you're looking like a. Yeah, we're doing that way. We're yeah. going that way. It's a 350 yard shot where we might have to wait it out, or we can just hike the long way around and have like a 200 yard shot. I think that's a pretty easy answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I uh, wish we could have seen that buck bed down. I don't think he. There think. he is. There he is. You see him? Yep. Where is he? He's not better down. He's standing. He's at that open, he's in the bottom right of that timber patch. He just walked behind a tree. Okay. Well, I think we don't waste any more time. Right. Let's just go. She's bedded. Okay. She's bedded. We have all the time to make a move. Just don't try to, just try to stay low because they can pinpoint us. All right. That doe's bedded. The buck's, I guarantee that buck's not going to leave him. So what we're going to do is we're going to, loop our way to this ridge where we saw the original doe and shoot him across the valley. It should be like a 200 to 250 yard max shot, which that's just perfect. Yeah, that doe that he was originally chasing, she's bedded. So we're gonna back up.
got right there. Did not go according to plan. So we backed out back to the back side of this ridge. And instead of taking this road, we're gonna climb up this ridge and get on the spine of the ridge and look down across. That way we have visual without bumping any other deer. We don't think those were the same deer, but you just never wanna have deer blown out the area like that. So we're gonna do plan B. Hopefully this goes a little bit better. found a moose <laughs> way at the top of that mountain <laughs> well maybe like 30 yards below the top you can see a clear eye from here do you see this middle knob right here go like a hundred yards up and then go like a hundred yards to the right in that patch like in the middle of that a thick patch up there it's bedded. You see it?
that same general area where we saw those uh, those deer earlier, and it's a it's a spike. It's like the smallest forky I've ever seen in my life, but it's a buck. So we just gotta wait for something bigger to step out. It's good that there's deer there because earlier those deer blew out of this area right here. So it's good that there's still deer stay, like in this area right here. So. It's so crazy, he just like vanished. It's like, you think it's so open, you just catch him. It just goes to show we're probably missing like so many deer right now. So we lost visual of that little spike. I think he's just behind some brush where he's bedded down into that patch of timber right there. We don't see him. Haven't seen him for probably like 25 minutes. And Nate glassed back across to where we saw those two does earlier run into. And I think that same doe is coming back out of the timber into that clear cut where we last saw her when she was looking at us.
Ready to go kill a deer? I'm ready. Ready being the cold? Obviously not. I'm sitting <laughs> in a warm truck still. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. It's a solid summer 8 degrees. Okay, it's been so slow. We've been, we've been so cold. We started a fire. I seen some moose, and I looked back across, like way across, two huge bucks, two two five by fives, I think. These are the big. And they're sparring. They are. Like that's about as good as it gets for public land Washington whitetail. Like they're potential wall hangers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dude, they're only 930 yards. That looks a lot farther than 930. Nine thirty one. Oh my goodness, dude. Oh my goodness. Dude, they are huge. They're massive. Oh, I think one of them's a 4x4, four four, the other one's a 5x5. Five five. Oh my goodness. That's exactly why you don't shoot spikes. <laughs> How do we make a move? Oh my gosh, dude, it's huge. They're on the road that we were on. That road goes all the way up. But I feel like that's not a good route because we can't shoot across. If anything, we're going to have to go this way and try to shoot them across. Because think, from here to there, that's only 930. One sec, one sec. And so if we can move our distance or close the distance on this side, hopefully within Dude, 400. That far, see that? So there's this close ridge. That far ridge, right? And there's a right ridge. Yep. That's 580. So 680, 780. So you're looking at 400. 350. 350, 400. We need to go. We need to go. Oh my goodness. Well, you gotta choose which one you're gonna shoot Are first. you kidding? The right one. <laughs> Dude, just seeing this is making my day. I've never seen white tail this big in my life. Okay, so we have, so here's the left one is a, he's a five by five. The, 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 right, the one, right one's a four by four, but he, he has a bigger frame. Oh my goodness. All right, you pack up. You pack up first. Once you're done, I'll pack up. I'll keep an eye on them. They're, they're sparring. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I can see them clear eye. The reason why I noticed them was because we've been looking at the hillside all morning. And I'm like, we were standing by the fire. I look up, I'm like, what that? I'm almost certain that dot wasn't there and throw the binos up, and in my binos, I can already see the two racks of these bucks. And I just told Nate, big bucks, and I ran over here, got the spotter on them. Two nice white-tailed bucks. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. This is incredible. So, Nate's uh, gonna pack up, get his pack ready, and then once he's done, he'll, he'll come back, get visuals on these deer, and then I'll go and pack up. That way we don't lose visual of these deer. But they're on a road. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Maybe this is the reason why we couldn't get that little 3x4 yesterday. Maybe. Just maybe. We'll see. We're gonna make a play on these bucks. They are going to town on each other. Yeah, that big eight point or four by four is definitely the more dominant buck. He's just bullying that five by five round. And if they're rattling like this, we have grunt calls and we have uh, rattles too. Oh, fingers crossed. Still there, still in the same area that we spotted them. So we're almost there. We're like 500 yards from them, breaking a sweat.
I'm pretty sure that's them, dude. I'm pretty sure that's him. Let me get this potter on him. It's the five by five. It's the five, the smaller one. Is it the one that there's a little tree going right in the middle? Of the yeah, box? and he's bed is facing this way. That's it. With the little tree going. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. That's him. He's bedded. The other guy's got to be around. All right. So they did not crest over the ridge. They actually just hiked up the spine of the ridge, like a hundred yards, and they bedded down. I have the five by five in my spotting scope right now. He's bedded. Oh, but we're looking for the big eight. Dude, get either percent. 437 yards. 437. I'm directly, this tree is directly between me and that buck, so I'm going to get a layer on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good. Just move very slow. I need to find his buddy. His buddy's gotta be with him. This buck is sleeping. He's sleeping. Go ahead. We're gonna be here for a while. You know how many hunting videos I've seen where he goes pee?
sardines of the last night. I thought they were gonna be good luck. He's gonna stand, he's standing. He's dead. Turn on your GoPro. Calm, cool, collected, dude. Whenever you're ready, but hold up. Don't take that. Right under him, dude. Right under him. He's still there. Yeah, way low. You're like. Like just to the right of where you shot him. Dude, he's going up. Dude, he's not even spooked. Do you see him? He's just feeding. Just be patient. He's not spooked.
Yeah, I see him. He's in the trees. He's not spooked. He'll give you another shot. Are you sure you're dialed right? Yeah, you're way low. Huh? No. He's behind you. He's just feeding by a bunch of brush. He's like 460 right now. He'll show up, dude. He's not spooked. No, the glare is kind of making it hard. He disappeared behind those trees. If he comes out, I need to rearrange him. Oh, he's he's up top. Up top. Yeah. Up above those uh oh, yeah. Okay, hold up. I need to arrange him. Where the heck is my rangefinder? Do you see him? You can you range him? What does it say? Huh? Give me your range finder. Throw it, just toss it backwards. Oh, it's... Five hundred, so... Go to eleven and a half MOA. Make sure you hold for the wind, just wait till he turns broadside. Yep, whenever you're ready. I think right over. Huh? No, he's running. He's stopping. Yeah. On the other side of the face now, like the left, the left ridge. Huh? No, the far one. It's almost skyline at the yellow patch that's getting hit by the sun. Dude, that shot was just barely over him. Definitely not a hit. I, he 
doesn't look hit. I just see him in the brush. Just keep an eye on him. I mean, if I would have just hit his back, I would have spined him. Yeah. How'd you hold on that shot? Left. Your windage was perfect. Do you see him? Yeah. He's in the brush. Just high. I should have just told you to hold that one. Clean miss. Clean miss. That's better than a bad hit. Did you scope yourself? Yeah. Is it bleeding? <laughs> yeah, it is. I just don't understand. He. He did exactly what you you told me that I didn't think he was gonna do, which was like get up from his bed and literally just like start on a mission. Yeah. Like he was moving fast. Things went from nothing to action in a split second. We waited for that buck to stand for like two and a half hours, just sat here waiting, looking at him. And he finally gave me the feeling that he was gonna stand up. So right on cue, he stood up. Walked out maybe like 25 yards to the right. Nate took his first shot and that shot right was there, low and forward. Didn't hit the deer. The deer ran like 15 yards and he just kind of looked back like wondering what that was. And then he just went back to feeding casually, worked his way into this small timber patch, popped out on top at 503 yards. I looked at the dope chart for Nate's gun again. I gave him a dope and shot right over him on the second shot. And then from there, Buck just slowly hopped away and crested onto the other basin. So, that's the way it goes, but that's, that's, on, that's on our end. But anyway, we're gonna work towards where uh, we shot him. And then, just kinda check out that spot and then work way down and then back to the truck. It's a little dark now, back to the truck, and this is it for uh, Nate's whitetail season. Today was his last day to hunt, that's why I stuck it out one more day with him. I was supposed to leave to Oregon today, but I'll leave to Oregon tomorrow for my final elk hunt for the season. There's just a lot of merit to hunts that go like this. Obviously, we would love to be holding him right now, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. I know Nate's thinking about it a lot more than I am, so I'm not going to take his spotlight. <laughs> no, it was uh, a couple really hard days of work and ended kind of on a, a spot where I, I, my full responsibility I didn't do all the pre-work that I should have ended up doing before the season. Shooting my gun in the lower temperatures and things like that. But uh, it hurts anybody that's out there and missed an animal, which is usually most hunters at some point, uh, know, know it hurts. But hopefully uh, carry that through the winter and into the spring and um, put the work in off-season. This is the first time I've seen Nate miss with his rifle. <laughs> so it's not like Nate doesn't know what he's doing. He's, I've seen him shoot and I know he's an accurate shooter. This was just coming down to the idea where, you know, sometimes you just think you've practiced enough and then when it's showtime, you realize, oh crap, maybe, maybe I didn't practice enough. So it's a lot of uh, thinking to go into the off season and next year we'll be back at it. But for now, I'm signing off. I'm headed down to Oregon tomorrow. We'll see ya.